and he breaks free down the middle of the field, and that is going to be no one other than K.J. Smith, and he's in for a touchdown. The Bulldog Radio Network proudly presents the Coach Gray Show on 102.7 FM, Carney's hometown radio station. And now, here are the hosts of the show, Mike Davis, Jim Dickerson, and Coach Josh Gray. I like that. I like the sound of that applause. It's got it. it, it there's more of a positive uh, sound to it, Brian. You, you know, I think, especially after a 35 to nothing win. Did you call that? Yep. Go ahead and turn your mic on. You know you want to do this. You know you want to be on this show. That's Brian Watts. The problem. The problem is the camera isn't. Yeah, I don't have a camera, so. <sighs> Come on, Mike. I set you up for fame, buddy. This, I mean, Hollywood's calling. I know it is. I'm going to answer here right after the show. <laughs> you all know. You're listening to the Coach Gray Show, and, and there is a good reason that we should have the Coach Gray Show today, and that reason is, Coach, you guys just took it to the house last week. That was awesome. Cowbell, baby. Yes. Cowbell. Yes. I, before we get started, though, I have to tell you, because we were just talking about this off the air, you asked me, did I watch the game? Well, no, I didn't travel to the game. But I want you to know, <laughs> I want you to know how I was able to actually witness said victory. Uh, Lori Conway and Quentin Conway are Kale Conway's parents. He's one of your players. That's right. And uh, we tried to log on to wh whatever it is, Jim, that uh, you have to jump through about 89 hoops to get through. Plus, I believe you got to have your credit card ready to pay, <laughs> right? To watch the game. And we were not able to do that. So I, and I don't know, because Brian. Because our credit card has no money on it. <laughs> yes. Your credit card has not been accepted, sir. And well, anyway, Brian and I were texting back and forth, and I said, I don't know how I'm going to watch this game or how we're going to follow it. The long and the short of it was Quentin Conway took Lori Conway's phone from the stands there at Ruskin High School and started calling, not only playing the game and, and broadcasting it through, you know, I guess she's got the, the connection to be able to, to, to send the thing to a Facebook, or not Facebook, I guess a YouTube page. And, uh, oh, my gosh, uh, I was watching the game, and I'm listening to Quentin basically call this game. I mean, as we were, now, yes, it, was he as good as Jim Dickerson? No. But but the guy didn't even have a roster in front of him, much less a spotter or a good-looking guy like me sitting next to him doing play-by-play -play or doing the color. <laughs> that's, that's arguable. I know. I hear you out there. So well, and and I will say this because we 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 get calls, we got calls, we get emails, we got them. Um, so we've talked about do we do the radio for the away games and the. Um, logistics that a lot of these places like Ruskin don't have for the ability for us to do it. So we're working on it. Um, we have been getting a, I'm trying to be very delicate with this. Don't be polite, Jim. An eight number of questions about video coverage of the games. And I'm allowed to say the following. <laughs> <laughs> it's not our policy. We're working on it. <laughs> That's all I'm allowed to say. All right. Well, Moving on. Yeah, let's get to the game, Coach. Uh, 35 to nothing. Let's look at the big picture. Then we're going to dive down into some uh, really amazing play by we'll, – we'll talk about them all. But uh, let's talk – how did it feel? I mean, you got a monkey off your back, right? Yeah, it was uh, – you know, like I said the weeks before, it was, you know, a step-by-step -step process and a step-by-step uh, -step making, making sure we're ready to go and making – you know, uh, eliminating some things and getting better each week. And, you know, we we did that in there um, and did it in a, in a pretty good fashion. We were pretty uh, pretty proud, obviously proud of our guys, uh, the efforts and everything that we did and the coaching staff. And, you know, I think um, things kind of finally started to click for us um, and, and obviously got the dub. And, you know, um, and as we went back and watched the film, uh, like I've said the last few weeks, there's – you know, you started to see some growth, and you started to see uh, those little things that we talked about, mental errors, mistakes, things like that, um, were cleaned up and, and, and were able to put a, a really good football game together. And, um, 
you know, I think uh, that's a testament to our kids continuing to, to trust the process of, of, of getting better at practice and day by day and all of that uh, that entails. And, you know, it was a great effort by the team. And, um, you know, it was, it was obviously, you know, good to, good to get the W. Right. The, their quarterback, and I, I don't have his name here in front of me, uh, Ruskin's quarterback, you could tell he's a great athlete. And I and I know uh, we had guys that were the, the defense was terrific. In fact, uh, I don't have it set up yet, so I'm, I'm going to hold off on on the, our we we had our players players of the week this week. Yeah, there were two defenders that just killed it. Uh, before we get to those guys, though, I, you you could tell that just by the way the quarterback Ruskin's quarterback moved. In, in and out of the pocket, and I mean a lot. He ran more back behind the line, their line of scrimmage than, you know, downfield. Yeah, tremendous athletes. Yes, and, you yes. know, hats off, hats off to our guys and, yeah. and, and keeping him hemmed up and, uh, you know, keeping him in check for the most part. And, you know, when you have um, guys with ability like that and are dangerous to, yes. to throw it to some dangerous weapons down the field. Yeah. Um, with speed and, and a mobile quarterback who's able to scramble and run and right. uh, maneuver back uh, behind the line of scrimmage and then all of a sudden just take off, you know, um, that's that's a task for the defense to uh, to, to to hold on to and to and to hold up. So um, they did a good job of of doing you know pretty much every down every down of of making <laughs> sure defense, yeah making sure that oh. he was was hemmed in there and right and taken care of and. You know, he got away from a few times. He did. And, and out leveraged us a few times. Yes. But, um, you know, it, it, I thought overall, though, I thought defensively we played a pretty dang good football yeah. game and, and eliminating a big play, which they rely on big plays a lot, broken right. coverage or, mm -hmm. you know, a receiver breaks off the route um, or a, the scheme route scheme and, it, you know, your quarterback scrambles and it, you got to stay, you know, stay on your man as they go downfield and as they – uh, break off those routes, and I thought we did a good job of that. Uh, defense played aggressive, uh, um, physical, and um, and and we shored up some of our tackling. Uh, no doubt about it. And uh, let's see, the guys that uh, that I was talking about before, the the two backs that uh, let's see, both uh, Joe Marshall and Luke Nolan had interceptions, and uh, you could tell they were just frustrating the Ruskin offense all yeah. night long. They they did and that that's a testament to our D line and linebackers to put a quarterback under into some you know yeah. high pressure situations and to throw the ball up and and they both made great those those two uh, Joe and Luke are both you know like I've said before great athletes um, broke on the ball put themselves in a great position uh, to be successful out there to to make those picks and to get those interceptions and to um, you know, get after a little bit, and it was good to see for sure they uh, very deserving and and you know took took advantage of some situations. Yeah, you know, and, and I think uh, w one of the things that I took away from the defense was that they they still looked uh, disciplined. In other words, they were they were sound on their assignments, which I would think as a young player it would be difficult to do when you can see that your opposing team's offense is just falling apart. That you'd want to freelance a little bit, you know what I'm saying? You want to, right. you'd, you'd want to jump in and say, "Well, I can get that guy." And then, so the next thing you know, a linebacker's going after a guy, and he's out of position, and then that's when you get stung. Didn't we, didn't we see that Sunday night? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good example of what I'm talking about. Yeah, not sticking to the to the plan. Stay to, to the, the plan. Yeah. keep the plan. Right. Stay with the plan, and that you know, and and it is, and that shows growth with with some of those yeah. guys this year, and uh, the discipline that they have, and. Um, and capitalized on it. Yeah. And uh, let's see who else was. Uh, well, I do want to talk about your quarterback, Casey Rooney, uh, because I, I think he was. Uh, and in fact, I, what did I say in here? I, I, I said, the sophomore Casey Rooney had a workmanlike performance at quarterback, completing two passes to Hayden Douglas for 60 yards, uh, KJ Smith for 19 yards and a touchdown, and Zach Grace for 17 yards. That's a pretty nice little night. And uh, it, it's not, you know, he didn't put up just glaring numbers or anything like that. Right. But this is a sophomore who had an opportunity to, to from the quarterback position. Right. Yeah. You know, it was good to see Casey come in yeah. there and, and kind of relax. And, um, and, and like you said, the workman, you know, yeah. he did what he needed to do and, and excelled, you know, and did a great job of extending some plays. Um, you know, one of uh, Hayden's big uh, 
uh, one of his big catches he made on our sideline and, and came back to the ball and uh, kind of a little scramble drill and came back to the ball. And Casey uh, put it on him and um, made a great catch on the sideline, got us a first down. And, um, you know, I think that shows a lot of, you know, of confidence in himself and um, really, really did a nice job in, uh, in, in coming in and, and, and taking care of it taking care of business. Talk a little bit about the adjustment, though, that the players have to make, because it's not as easy as just the plays are all the same, so we just put a different right. guy and it's all good. Everybody has to adjust when you – because your timing's different, sure. what you expect. Talk a little bit about about that. Especially at the quarterback position. Um, well, and like you said, any position, when you bring somebody new in, there's – you know, the cadence is just a little bit different, you know, for, for him. Or, you know, our cadence is our cadence, but – there's always a little bit of difference in there and how the ball comes out of his hand, how he throws it, our mesh points, all those things come into play. And um, so there is a little bit of that, but, you know, I think um, the guys, you know, blend well with that and, you know, obviously practice that and, and Casey takes reps throughout the, throughout the, throughout the week before and, and, and does those things. And, um, you know, they, they know that what he's capable of doing and, you know, and, and, Really had a good week of practice up to up to the game, and um, you know I think that shows the kind of poise that he has and what he's capable of doing. And um, you know for him to uh, to step into that, you know on a Friday night lights and 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 go in there and, and to perform the way he did, it was uh, very encouraging for sure. KJ Smith had 282 yards rushing, uh, 12.3 yards a carry. And, That's not uh, bad. What? I mean, you I know, know. listen, I, I had in uh, uh, a guy had asked us on, uh, I think it was on Facebook, sent us a message and said, you know, the implication was he, he was very polite. But the implication was, what, what did you not see what KJ did? You know, because we, we selected two defensive players right. for our players of the week, and I'll get to those in a minute. But I thought it was kind of funny. And I thought, well, you know, in KJ was also player of the week in your first game. And I, I, I had a a guess that even watching on that first first time out against Platte City, Platte County, was that, that we're going to see a lot of this. And uh, and sure enough, we saw that he, in fact, also caught a touchdown pass from Casey Rooney. So he scored five touchdowns on yeah. the evening. Not a bad night. What? Not a bad night. See, but when that <laughs> happens, it makes it so difficult for us when we're choosing these players yeah. of the game because we get uh, <clears throat> fan mail. <laughs> You know, and and it it may it makes it hard because um, defense didn't allow one point, so you know that, and then KJ's That's out doing either. five touchdowns right. and all this, that, and the other. It Saturday was challenging yeah. for yes. us. In That's fact, good to get the heat on you a little bit. In fact, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm not supposed it. to talk about this, but I'm gonna. There were two guys in this room that got in a little bit of an argument, <laughs> and it was uh, not me. It's a tough decision. I mean, that's tough. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, when you play it, well, but like it's that, more it's fun that way. When it, it's it tough. is. I mean, you know, and, and in fact, yeah, when, when the three of us who are generally and we never agree on anything. No, that's not true. <laughs> I mean, generally, in, in, especially from home games, when we all three see the same thing, you can tell what's going on. And by you know the end of the game, you thought, okay, that's our guy right there. But this week, let me get to it here because I want to go ahead and announce these guys, our players of the week on deep. And well, I mean, we only you know it's either offense or defense. But even when we got to the defense, coach, I couldn't say one of these guys uh, over the other because listen to these things. Okay, let me just tell you who they are. First of all, it's Darren Langford who's a linebacker, and uh, he shares this week's Stables Player of the Week with number 21, Luke Nolan. Now, let me tell you about these two guys, what they did. In case you didn't see it, Coach. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, were, you, were you there? I, I, I was there. <laughs> I was there. Uh, no, you didn't have to watch the the, thre- the video. Yeah, the sh- sh- shaky cam. You pay $60 yeah. to watch it. I, mm. I got no comment. <laughs> yeah, listen, uh, Quentin, Quentin Conway, buddy, if you can keep that up uh, on road games, uh, keep uh, keep doing that. Give us the play-by-play and the video. And, Versatile uh, fans. Yeah, I like Versatile it. Versatile fans. Yeah, that, just all you got to do is ask. Maybe maybe Brian will send you a check. Uh, Darren, <laughs> all right, check this out. Darren Langford, three solo tackles, three assists, one tackle for loss, one pass deflected, and a caused fumble. Yeah. That's a guy who's busy. That's what you want your linebackers doing. And he, you know, and, and I know we've talked about him and, 
Um, Darren is, is that guy that um, is smart, you know, which, you know, I think obviously is important, but he's, he's got, he's, he's developed a knack for the ball and, and understanding, um, you know, he understands our scheme and what we're doing, but he just understands the game and is, is, has really grown into a, uh, a very smart football player on the field and has a knack for the ball. And, um, you know, our guy, the team works on stripping the ball and, and all of those things. And that's a, a huge piece that we practice and creating those turnovers. And, um, you know, Darren is a, a workhorse and, um, you know, uh, what a great young man, um, not only a football player, but just as a young man. And he's very humble and he's, you know, just, uh, just a great kid that, that comes to practice and leads and leads by example and gets the guys fired up and um, really does a great job uh, defensively and, and in the locker room um, as well. You know, he's, um, and I know we, we talked about his, his size and um, he plays bigger than that, you know, and, and, and it's not all about size. And that's what I think some people get, get, you know, get say, well, I'm not big enough to play football. I'm not, eh, I don't buy that. Um, I don't buy that. He's, he's big. He's strong. He's, you know, um, plays bigger than what he is. And, and you saw it on Friday and that's, a, um, against a team who has some weapons that can, that can burn you. And he was, was not caught off guard. So not at all. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I, I looked, you can look at the guy and size wise or not, uh, he's, he's not a guy to, you don't want to. No, you don't want to mess with no, Darren. No, no, that's he where plays I'm going. angry. <laughs> yes, he plays angry. And, uh, and I, yeah, and he's got the, That's what you want from your I mean, linebackers. That's what football that's what it's about. And, and, that's right. And, and here's the word I was thinking of while you were describing him: disruptive. Yeah, that's what you want your linebackers doing because we don't get to see it on the Chiefs' defense for some reason. But you know, you're like, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> the Chiefs have a defense. <laughs> So I don't want to get into that, but folks know what I'm talking about. Let's move on to this next guy because uh, this is why we struggled. I mean, how are we going to? All right, let's just pick. Let's just do two of them then. So all right, the other guy who is sharing the stables, local kitchen and patio player of the week, Luke Nolan, number 21, six solo tackles. He's the guy that's out there all by himself on an island making open field tackles and bringing people down. Yeah. And and one interception. And one pass deflected. Again, disruptive, but also being in the right place at the right time. Exactly. He plays safety for us, and he kind of roams back there, and uh, he's gained a lot of confidence over this last week or so. And, um, and you know, I think early in the game, uh, it, it kind of clicked on him a little bit, and he was, fl like you said, flying around. Um, you know, the thing with Luke is he's a fast, he, he's a good track runner, hurdler, I mean, fast kid, right? But not only that, when you combine that with, in football with an angry young man when he's on the field and coming down and flying down and lighting some dudes up, you know, uh, that's a great combination for the game of football and spe specifically for us. And, you know, you see him outside of – outs off the field and that, I mean, again, nice as can be, you know, just a, a, a great young man. And uh, Luke is, you know, it's kind of like – I don't know the cartoon. What the name of the cartoon when he flipped it? it it's never mind. I'm gonna get off that. Where it, 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 it switches. Well, I th like, no, I don't know. No, I'm the, thinking of the guy that, that. Where the, 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 the transforms. The, the green, or could, the green guy. The incredible the, Hulk. There you go. The green guy. A, a yep. good, you know, off yep. the field. He's this nice, quiet, yeah. docile guy. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't think much of him. Then he puts his helmet on, gets on. The you're looking at I know it. Gets Lee. on the field and just, you know, flies around and, and like, it wreaks havoc. He, indeed he does, and uh, we sometimes wreak havoc on this <laughs> show. And uh, Jim is an incredible hulk of a human being, I mean to tell you. And we're going to be right back with more of the Coach Gray Show. Stay with us. Corporate underwriters of KPGZ programming include these fine businesses. I'm Sean Barber, owner of Stables Local Kitchen and Patio in Kearney. Stables is a Kearney thing. 
we are all about our Carney community. We love to be the place where people get together. Stables features a full menu with a scratch kitchen, offering lunch and dinner options. Stables has been a proud member of the Kearney community for almost 20 years, and we are very appreciative of the ongoing support from this wonderful community. You can check us out online at stables816.com, and Stables is part of the True 816 family. Eat, drink, local. Celebrate fall with the Holiday Trio. Bees Flowers and Gifts is offering three months of unique flower arrangements to share and celebrate those special months of October, November, and December. Each bouquet features a seasonally themed assortment delivered in a charming holiday vase. The Holiday Trio is now available at Bees Flowers and Gifts, 100 West Washington Street in Kearney, 816-628-6811, and their website is beesflowers.com. Bees, your first choice for flowers. Welcome back to the Coach Gray Show. These shows are a lot more fun when we go off the air on a winning week. And I got to tell you, it was fun. And did they ever win? The Bulldogs shut out Ruskin on the road 35 to nothing last week. And oh, man, was it a sweet victory. Hey, real quick, did you know, too, because it's because of shows like the Coach Gray Show that we are, we'll be tonight at the Chamber Gala, and we are up for, are we up for business of the year? Three, three awards. We are up for some awards. Awesome. Yeah, the radio and, station. And, That's and good. The Coach Very Gray good. Show is a big part of that. I doubt about it. And uh, I lost. I have lost. So I was up for stud of Carney, and I've lost three years in a row to Dr. Strath. I think you meant stub. Stub. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the part, Dr. Strathman. Do you, have you seen him? Right. Yeah. He, yes. I, lose, I know. He's I lose, a big boy. I lose to him every year. <laughs> He's yoked up. This could be my... <laughs> oh, mercy. All right. Where are we going with this? All right. Oh. We talked about KJ. Uh, no doubt about uh, his ability. And I, I just... Hey, let's give credit to the offensive line. Yeah. Before we go a step further. Uh, those guys are doing something up front, and they're doing it right. And, and listen, nobody gets nearly 300 yards of rushing without having an amazing offensive line. Yeah, and that's, you know, again, and just like I've said every week, it's about us continuing to get better in offensive line and uh, across the board of, of what we need to do. And they were able to, you know, obviously um, open up some some nice running lanes for KJ um, and and to sustain blocks and to, you know, those some of those mistakes that we had seen are, 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 are you know, we're getting better at it. And, uh um, I think uh, obviously it showed on on uh, last Friday, and you know KJ is the one that would would say, uh, you know everything all all glory goes to the to the old line there and off of that and and his success and and what he was able to do and um, and and obviously uh, spread the wealth to everybody but but himself and you know uh, he's a pretty humble young man and uh, you know he 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 did a lot of great things and. Um, you know, powered through and, and, and made some great reads and cuts, and, and he's continuing to get better each week as well. Right. Uh, continuing with the offense, we talked about the, the guys that uh, caught passes, but uh, so let's just talk about receiving here. Hayden Douglas had two receptions for 60 yards, obviously averaging uh, 30 yards carry yeah. or a catch, which is also pretty I'll take a 30-yard pass every time. And, uh, yeah, you just keep throwing those all yeah. up. Uh, but let's talk about Hayden Douglas a little bit. You know, uh, Hayden is a – you know, he comes to – so when I first think of Hayden, he comes to practice, he gets those guys. You know, he's got, he's, he's got a, a, a spark about him this year um, and, a, and a sense of determination and, and wanting to do well. Not that anybody else doesn't want to do well, don't get me wrong. But comes to practice with a, a sense of purpose. And, he, you know, I think that stems <coughs> – excuse me. It stems from, you know, last year he got injured. And, and missed the majority of the season. Was he, wait, he, he's he broke a, his hand. Is he a junior? He's a senior this oh, year. He was okay, a junior okay, last year. Okay. Um, and, you know, really came with a sense of purpose and has done a great job. He's got a great mindset, uh, been a great, has a great attitude, um, helps lead, the, lead, the, lead that group. And, you know, 
um, and make some tremendous catches. There was a uh, one of his catches was a was a comeback route, uh, needed a first down, and um, kind of had a little scramble and uh, found found him and made a great toe tap catch inbounds and and came down with the rock and and got us a first down and you know he has a really come on strong um, and and has really uh, done a great job not only on the football field but but outside of that too um, in the classroom uh, and, and across the board so he's he's really done a nice you know yeah. nice job off the field none of that that's stuff. A, that none of that surprises me though yeah. that that they're all just I mean I I, I, would, I would say model citizens but I. <laughs> I'm sure there's an exception or two, and they would probably say, yeah, you don't really know me that well. I just remember when I was 18 yeah. and 17 and 16, and wow. So, yeah. All right, so we talked about KJ. He caught uh, two balls, and uh, one of the receptions was for a touchdown, and uh, so it was two for 19, uh, averaging 9.5. I know this sounds silly when I'm averaging two passes, but nonetheless, one was for a score. So KJ's got a pair of hands, too. Yes, he does. Catch, yeah. He's able to get out of the backfield and – you know he's got a lot of speed and 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 good hands and a good route runner and um, you know whether he's a check down route or he's a primary guy he he does a good job of bringing the ball in. Yep. And then uh, Zach Grace, number fourteen, used to be number eighty seven, had uh, two catches, uh, seventeen yards, averaging uh, eight and a half. Again, these are these are pretty nice numbers for. For Casey Rooney, yeah. finding these guys open, knowing what's downfield and seeing the field, you know, I think he did a nice job. Right. He yeah. did, you know, and that's and that's finding targets like that that are open and mm-hmm. uh, going through a progression and 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 where he's where he needs to uh, look at the ball or look get the ball thrown and uh, his timing on that and he's got a good quick release and 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 did a really nice job. Uh, yes, he did. And, and Zach, obviously, you know. Um, not only can he catch, he's he's a heck of a. I mean, he's he's a like we talked about in the past with him. He's he's kind of the uh, big package. You know, he's able to block right. well. But um, he's good. I like him. His space. size because of his size. He he's good for the yards after the catch. Oh yeah, I mean, he can just yeah. keep knocking people down. He does a good job yeah. of that. <laughs> you know, he, he he's not afraid to to lower his shoulder. Right. And you get somebody his size in the in the second level and and third level. You know, it's. They're, they're usually the guys. Listen, if you want to tackle that guy, you better bring your lunch. Yeah, I, I you mean, don't get freight train. I, I know it. I know, and you can see it. And generally, the guys, the, the smaller guys, are going to be your defensive secondary, and that just gives him all the more advantage. What's, what's he weigh? He's he's one eighty something, two hundred something. Two... I'm going to lay odds. What's on the sheet is wrong. Yeah. What's to say? Uh, I don't have the That's roster the in front of me. Yeah, it's yeah. right. He's oh, it is right. He's legit. He's two twenty five. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he carries his 225 a lot better than I do, <laughs> mine. And I'm not that tall. He's six. Yeah. So that's that's what it's <laughs> like to be fit, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I see, uh, let's see here, punting uh, Drake Cole. He had one punt. One punt, yeah. <laughs> let's he had talk, one punt. Let's I talk punt. about, is there any other kicking on there? I see Braxton. Oh, Braxton, yes. Braxton, How do you do? Read love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There, Jim. You want to go ahead and call that out? Well, right I don't there. have my glasses well, on, but you it just... says points three. There you go. But those three are points. those are extra points, though, because we had that's it, right. Because we had to we had a two point conversion. Correct. So he did get some points. Yeah. So the guy was I out like... there. <laughs> Listen, I'll take I those points any way we can get them. Oh yeah, but, but, you know, yeah. and and with Braxton, he's got obviously as as you all know. He's uh, he's got a big leg on him. I want to see the fifty and, yarder. Yeah, I'd, that'd be great. Make that happen, I think coach. Make that he's happen. He's done it. Yeah, he's hit him. Hey he guys, can hit him. Hey guys, stop, stop, stop! I want him to kick a fifty yarder. <laughs> I know we're advancing down the field, but just stop. Stop right there. Yeah, yeah or, or as you said, and I think you used that word in a game one time. You said matriculating. Didn't you? Yeah, I yeah. did. I stole did. that from and I got, Hank Stram. I got uh, reams. You for know doing what that. though. Wow. Well, thanks to Hank Stram, though, he made that, that word famous and actually put it into a football context. Well, that's why I thought it was okay to use it. Apparently I not. I know it. I know it. Uh, so we talked about KJ, 282 yards, Casey Rooney. Uh, and I talked about how, really, you step. here's what I liked about the game. It looked like, it didn't look like you were running the score up. I don't know, let's just be fair. We're going to be nice. You just kept the gas on, man. You yeah. just kept going after it. 
and our running game was working so well. Yes. You know, and I think that was a big piece um, piece of it is, you know, if something's working, continue to, to do it. And, um, you know, and, and we were able to get some younger guys in um, in, a, in, a, in a third and, and be able to, I saw to work that. some guys – guys through the through the lineup which was good and um and get them some friday night light experience which right. you know um is good for them and good to see what they can do out there and and uh, uh that was that was fun and they yeah. they got to see a, a friday night with some speed and some athleticism and um and did a nice job because they uh, they held on to the defensively held on to the shutout and offensively we were able to to move the ball so and the game seemed really pretty balanced. I mean, passing, running, defense, it was all pretty well, yeah, balanced I mean, across right. the board. It wasn't all lopsided. Like, the only thing we can do is, is run the football, run the right, ball right. or whatever. That's what I so, liked about Casey is that part that he, you know, where he was able to to mix up the plays a little bit and still keep them guessing. By the way, I wanted to mention, too, uh, William Sanders was the quarterback for Ruskin. And he was 3 of 14, 3 of 14 for 32 yards. That's the kind of defense. Shut right. down defense, swarming, disruptive, yeah, angry. That's, that's what you. <laughs> that's exactly right, you know. And I think, uh, you know, we were able to stop the run and 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 you know defend the pass and you know and to, and to me what that tells is a um, our secondary uh, had a nice game of covering some some very athletic and fast receivers. Uh, and, and able to hold on that, and we were able to get some pressure on the quarterback. Um, and, you know, obviously he's, he's, our, he was very elusive um, and able to run pretty well. Um, at one point he was back and, back and forth in the backfield, uh, which seemed like an eternity. <laughs> um, and, but our secondary stayed, stayed true and, and were able to cover downfield and, 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 and able to get some uh, pass deflections. I uh, wanted to mention, too, Logan Ariano had uh, five carries and uh, averaged 11 yards a carry. I mean, you, yeah. you, it wasn't like KJ was doing all the work. Right. You know, and, so. and Logan, you know, we talked about him. He's a he's pretty dang fast athlete, very talented, um, plays wide receiver for us. And, um, you know, he's a kid that you, you get him to the perimeter and get him to the edge. And, you know, he's he's turns in that turbo and, and is, is out the gate. Uh, yes, and then, uh, of course, we talked about uh, all-purpose yards. For Did did I mention KJ's all-purpose yards with the touchdown? He was 300, 301. That sounds yeah. good. Any, any high school team, that you say, that's a pretty good night, you know? Yes, yes, I it mean, was. These, these are gaudy numbers, yes. I'm glad you – that's the first time I've heard these numbers, so I appreciate you. Well, I know, them. I know. I know you, you come in, I, hey, did you know that? You know, Coach Gray, sometimes it, he'll, he'll call me at home and say, Mike, did, <laughs> Did you get those stats together? Because I'm real interested. I, 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 wa I want to know about them. And I say, yeah, not, not quite yet, Coach. Just, just back off, buddy. Just calm down. I know, I know how you love the stats. I, I know. And I, you get into a cycle of after the game, it, it, it's on to the next game, and you, you don't, you know, I don't know. Can you tell you I don't? like the stats? <laughs> I like them. I like them a lot. I like it a lot. All right, here's this one. Listen to this one. Here's your total yards, total all all purpose yards. Five well, hey, oh, oh. five hundred and one. Yep. What? No, never mind. I was gonna let you guess. Oh but he ruined it. Say something. You know what? Won. That would have done Jeff. <laughs> that that would have just wasted more time because we we, we would have had to, to uh, play the background music for that one for the uh, what's it called? Jeopardy. Don't, thank you. Yeah. That, well done. You want to take this over now, Jim? <laughs> no, you're doing no, a great job. Get out of here. Uh, but I, I will say this. One thing that's not in the stats um, anywhere is uh, that I love, a little off topic, but it's the... the Imagine that. <laughs> shocker. People are like, eh, here he goes. Uh, it's the, the support of the community and the fan base and the parents and all that sort of thing. And the funny thing is, as we talked about the player of the game, when we first did the player of the game, five years ago or whatever, nobody even, I don't even think they knew it existed. They are like, whatever. <laughs> now people are, uh, they, ask us. It. they yeah. are involved and they're like, well, what about this? And what about that? Yeah. If we don't post it uh, uh, yeah, by 9 a.m. Gotta... on Saturday, <laughs> they're like, where's the like... player of the game? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and torches and, and pitchforks. <laughs> the, other, the other thing that they do, which I love is that, um, they're very supportive. Like we don't get a whole lot of, uh, 
you know, well, my kid, ran, you know, we don't get that. What we get is, did you see what the defense did or did you see? And it'll be someone talking about what someone else is and right. all that. But they're super supportive of the whole the whole thing. And that says a lot about Carney. I mean, that, that very supportive of of our kids and our schools and, and all of that uh, all in one. And, and, and we had a good, good turnout um, for being 45 minutes away down in Ruskin and um, yeah, good turnout, good support um, Had a nice uh, student section and, and people were loud. And, you know, that's what we need to have when we're on the road. Cause that, you know, that helps, that helps the team. Yeah. It helps them know that they've got support behind them and, uh, you know, they, they, uh, very much appreciated. Um, and it, like you said, uh, our community is second to none and, um, just very, very proud of that fact that, that we do have that support and, uh, very, very much appreciated. Yep. No doubt about it. You are listening to the coach gray show. We're going to step away for just a couple of minutes. Listen to these messages from our great football sponsors. Stay with us. We'll be right back. A special thank you going out to underwriters like these for their support of KPGZ. I'm Sean Barber, owner of Stables Local Kitchen and Patio in Kearney. Stables is a Kearney thing. We are all about our Kearney community. We love to be the place where people get together. Stables features a full menu with a scratch kitchen, offering lunch and dinner options. Stables has been a proud member of the Kearney community for almost 20 years, and we are very appreciative of the ongoing support from this wonderful community. You can check us out online at stables816.com, and Stables is part of the True 816 family. Eat, drink, local. Celebrate fall with the Holiday Trio. Bees, Flowers, and Gifts is offering three months of unique flower arrangements to share and celebrate those special months of October, November, and December. Each bouquet features a seasonally themed assortment delivered in a charming holiday vase. The Holiday Trio is now available at Bees, Flowers, and Gifts, 100 West Washington Street in Kearney, 816-628-6811, and their website is beesflowers.com. Bees, your first choice for flowers. Sean Barber, owner of Stable. Hi, Sean. <laughs> Sean joins us in studio. Now. Oh man, it's a, that guy can run a restaurant. You know, it's Sean Barber. I'm Sean Barber. No, you're not. Pretzel bites. I'll tell you this. What's funny about uh, when Brian has to warn us about our language when we're sitting in front of a microphone? <laughs> that just tells you how much fun we're having in this little room. I here, didn't mean but, to uh, spit all over there. <laughs> Well, Got a little carried away we, there for we a minute. spray it sometimes rather than say it. Uh, a couple of things real quickly. We, Pretzel bites. I, yes, indeed. But I want to talk <laughs> about, just real quickly, we talked about him off the air. Cameron Emmons, he had three solo tackles, and he's a sophomore. Yeah. He's playing linebacker. Talk about him. He is, uh, you know, he's really stepped up in, in, in understanding what we do and, in, and is a good football player, um, very deserving to be on the football field, and has really worked to, to earn that. And... Um, just has a knack for the ball. Not only that, has a knack for playing football. Um, you know, he plays plays uh, linebacker for us. Uh, he's also a running back. Uh, really is a uh, coming in in as a sophomore and, and really doing a good job. And expect a lot of great things from him uh, down the road for sure. That's what you like to see. So yeah. w- when we talk about these, and, and, and Jim brought this up when we were off the air just a minute ago, but you. You, you see the sophomore teams, freshman teams, and junior varsity, and they, in a, in a polite way, they are kicking tail and, uh, and just seem to be, you know, beating a lot of their opponents and handily. And as a fan, we, we want to sit back and say, 
oh, please, God, let this carry over. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, we, we really want to see that, you know, at the varsity level. And, and, and I, does, it, does that happen? Yeah, it, well, yeah, you know, I think um, as, as uh, teams progress and, and, and journey through the process, the process of being an eighth grader and freshman and JV, that, that continues on through uh, throughout the program. And, um, and our, our lower levels have done a, done a good job uh, this year so far. And, um, you know, I think those are good things, uh, obviously, to have that, that how important um, those levels are in, in the process of, of going through the program and, and that, that learning how to go compete, you know, at a freshman level or JV level, those are important part, parts of, of the program. Um, you learn a lot at those at that at that at that level of, you know, how to do things the right way, how to uh, go compete, how to fight through adversity. You know, you, the JV plays a game on Monday and they got to practice on Tuesday and and give good looks and scout looks and and things like that. And that's all an important part, uh, important part and an important piece um, to the growth of of the players and of the athletes uh, themselves to be able to go through that. And that's, you know, when you have that and those guys understand how important it is to, uh, to work hard, uh, you know, during the week so they can go perform and do well on a Monday or a Thursday or, you know, a freshman C team freshman plays on uh, tonight on Thursdays. Um, that that's such an important part of the program uh, to learn how to do that. Um, so we take those levels very seriously and want them to, to do well and want everybody to be successful and get everybody in and get some playing time and to, uh, to learn how to work and how to, how to go compete and how to fight hard and, you know, uh, not give up. And, you know, how we talked about, you know, the NGU and, you know, that's, and, and sometimes it's hard to understand, well, I don't want to play JV. Well, you know, I want to be varsity. Well, that's a, that JV level and that freshman level is such an important progression um going through uh the process and going through the uh through the program where you learn a lot um about the team and and inevitably about yourself right yeah but and it's interesting to me that lest you think mike's prayers don't get answered uh (laughs) it 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 isn't just an even progression all the way up so in other words if the team is doing really well the freshman team. It right. doesn't automatically mean that when these guys get to the senior level, it's going to be. Look at the Royals. Correct. Oh god. They dominated don't. in spring training. Right. Want to know where they are now? Yeah, we know. It just doesn't translate all right. the way through. And right. The same would apply to, you know, just because at the freshman, the game changes, the speed changes, and the size of these guys really changes. Right. Right. Yeah. That and that's exactly right. And and we were talking about that off the air as well. Is it doesn't always translate that way you hope it does and and that you know um guys continue to flourish and and continue to to do what they need to do and um you know but as as grades as they get come through and get older and sometimes things change and you know that's that's the beauty and i know we talked about it probably the very first show or maybe heck over the summer where we talked about it's always fun to kind of start out in june and see where you're at and who's going to step up and who's going to be you know how does everything kind of shake out that early? And um, who grew? And who, yeah, who I, grew I, and who you don't odds. recognize? Yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to lay odds that Keenan McNally was not nine foot five when he was a freshman. <laughs> but I could be wrong. Uh, that's a big boy. <laughs> yeah. um, and you talk about the, the attitude. I, I think of a, of a couple of coaches, Lou Holtz and Marty Schottenheimer come to mind. They took over, both of them took over, Bad programs, I, I mean, in their respective and, and Lou Holtz more than once, and uh, I mean these guys are and even Marty. I mean, it came to Kansas City and turned a lousy football franchise around. But I think both of those guys uh, they brought more to the table clearly. But I think the thing when you you read about these guys and you hear about them, uh, they they instill a, a habit of winning and and learning how to win and how to, how to have a winning attitude. Uh, how hard is that to do? <laughs> you know, I think uh, with, with younger guys, they, they need to know and need to learn. And that's a practice thing. I think where it all starts from with, with your, your off season um, where they weren't learn how to, to work hard, learn how to be pushed, learn how to, um, you know, uh, there's more in them than what they see. And, and to continue to, um, 
you know, through from summer to the start of football season and to seeing that uh, that to be successful takes that hard work, but then that's got to translate. And that's always an, that's an ongoing, that's a varsity level thing. That's a, that's a lower level. That's, that's across the board that, that, you know, it's got to translate what all that hard work you put into uh, to go put that out on the field um, when it counts on a competition night. Yeah. And it seems to me that it, at, at the high school level, the amount of coaching is, I mean, because you get what you get. It's not like in college or in the pros where you can go out and recruit. I know some high schools do a little bit. Yeah. I didn't say that out loud. But you get, <laughs> as a general rule, you get what you get. If they grew up in your area, that's what you've got to work with. So coaching becomes so important because you can't just go, okay, I want that guy and that guy over there, and we're going to transfer him in and all that like you can at the college or pro level. So coaching becomes I don't know how you do it, honestly. Well, it's, you know, just, and, that's a, it and that's a, a testament a, to our kids that are, are willing to be coached. Um, they want to get better. They have the desire to uh, to be coached. And coachability is such a key, such a key, uh, key factor. And, and being able to, to listen, and I mean, coaching is teaching. Being able to, to, to get taught something um, and then go replicate what you've been taught to do on a consistent basis, right? Math whatever um i knew i was gonna get a funny <laughs> laugh math just pops in my head on that whatever math. it is but to go put that out there um and then be able to get coached up on a saturday here's what you did right here's where we need to continue to grow at and here's what needs to kind of get fixed what what made that not work why did that not happen at that particular time and um and and you know i think with us our kids want to be coached up they want to be they want to be great. They want to be, you know, uh, continue to grow each, each week. So, um, which is, which is not always there. I think, uh, uh, some places I've been, that's not, that's not how it always is. And, um, our kids are very, are coachable and they want to be successful and, uh, they understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a, you, you could spend a, another hour uh, just talking about the coach player relationship and how those things work and you know what how you measure success right you know which i think is just a fascinating part of this incredible sport of football i mean no kidding and then you put it together as a team and how you get you know those 22 or more players let's just say offense and defense you get those guys to all play together with that same attitude i mean how wow i mean and, and that's why guys like and I, who did i say lou holtz and marty schottenheimer you think about those guys i mean that that is hard to do. Yep, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. I want to talk about tomorrow night. We, uh, yay, home game. Uh, Grain Valley versus Carney at home. And uh, what about these guys? Grain Valley. Good, good physical football team. Uh, Coach Alley does a, does a, does a great job of, of getting his guys coached up. Um, they're a physical team. Um, they've graduated a few uh, a few players from last year, uh, a few alignment and uh, their quarterback. And um, I, I think that's a good him, thing. I uh, remember him. Yes. <laughs> yes. He was a big rascal. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so, uh, but the guys that filled in are, are, are good athletes and um, it'll be a, it'll be a good game. They, I believe they're two and two coach. Yeah, Is that right? They, yeah. And they're, they're physical um, and, and they definitely got some, got some weapons at wide receiver as well. So, uh, they're a well balanced football team, and um, defensively, you know, it, it's kind of the same same thing. And um, I think the one thing that, again, you know, somebody the other day asked me what you know a key to victory is, and you know, it's 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 about it, there's not one player or one thing or somebody's got to be outstanding for us to win the ball game. It's it's about us doing our job and executing and and worrying about what we're doing, not about who we're playing what level or what their record is or anything like that. It's about us getting better each week. And that's, you know, it's easy for kids or coaches or people to get caught up on, you know, what's the record? Well, what about us? What, what do we do this week in practice that was better than last week? What do we need to improve on yet that we have to still grow with and continue to be, to be successful? Um, so I don't know. To me, it's not. A, it, it's it's more about us than it is about who we're playing. And um, you know, whether you're playing an, an undefeated team or a, a team that hadn't won a ball game, it's 
it's not about that. It's going and executing the way that you need to execute um, in all three facets of the football game and, and being consistent with that. And then, okay, well, let's take a step back from last Friday. Yeah, we won 35 to nothing. Well, what did we, what didn't we do right that, that we are better at, you know, that we're, that we know better that we need to continue to, to, to fix or why do we need to continue to fix this piece? What it, you know, we need something to be retaught, something not clicking. Are we just not understanding what, you know, what is it that, that needs to get more emphasized? Um, so, you know, it, 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 that's always a struggle. I think week to week with, when you, you talk about what's your key to victory. Well, my answer is always going to be, Hey, it's about us. And our key to victory is, is getting better each week and making sure that we're taking care of the things that we need to take care of and everything else will fall into place. Um, and we do what we're supposed to do. Um, we're a physical football team. We're making tackles. We're moving the ball down the field, running it, throwing it, protection, all those things, you know, we're, we're running down on our kickoff coverage team. We're, we're returning the ball well. All those things, the way that we know how to do and we're able to execute, we're going to have a pretty dang good night. Um, when we don't do those things, you know, that when we shoot ourselves in the foot with penalties or, you know, uh, uh, personal foul because we lose our mind briefly or we're, we're acting out of care, those things are what end up hurting you. And, and so those are the things that we continue to strive to, to get better at. Uh, so it's about us getting better each week. Um, with that, I know that was probably a longer answer. No, than no, what no. You wanted, but I, I, I'm right there I, with you. I, I mean, I think it, it, and it does reflect back to our earlier conversation, though, about uh, about coaching. But the coach doesn't do this by himself. I, I think that's the part about when you talk about well, the, the records really don't matter, and in fact, they don't because you're going to play a brand new game, and we we know this. I mean, that's why you play the games. Right. But I think there is that there, there's something internal uh, in each and every single player that they have to know what they're supposed to be doing. And then I think that that attitude that comes along with that, and then, of course, you want to translate that into a, a, a team effort. Right. Which, you know, that's what we hope for. Right. And and we come into each week, we're 0-0. Let's go 1-0 right. this week. Exactly. Let's go 1-0 yeah. this week um, and take care of business and execute like we know how to, you know. Um, Jim, did you want to talk about tomorrow night? We've got a little surprise Surprise uh, in the booth. Well, come on now, buddy. Pr prom promote it the way you know you can. Well, good evening, everybody. <laughs> we have a special guest uh, coming in tomorrow. Kelly Gentry is going to be doing the play-by-play. -play. Yeah, I baby. have to go to the East Coast, and I'll be doing a national network game on another network. Oh. So, But I'll be back. Oh. You I'll sound like back. me, Coach. Oh, man. I know. I know. I'll be back next week. We uh, the week at whenever it is. If that, somebody, if if uh, if another network doesn't hire you away, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen anytime <laughs> soon. But uh, our no, contracts Kelly, are Kelly, up, by the way, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, our contracts are up at the end of this year. <laughs> Kelly will be in there though. Kelly's looking forward to it, and he was with us uh, last week or two weeks ago. Yep. And uh, he'll do a great job. He but, always does. Yeah, by and the way, he did a great job on basketball. Exactly. Too. I was going to yeah. say, if you want to know if this guy's capable, uh, go hey, yeah. yeah, go to our uh, replay yeah. page and uh, listen to some basketball games and listen to this guy really, really call some play-by-play -play in a fast-moving game. Kelly? So, yeah. Don't let me down. <laughs> That's right. Don't screw it up, Kelly. No, no pressure. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Brian, put the camera back on me. Don't take my job, Kelly. I know that's a scary thing, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's that that wow, really? This, but nah, you know, he'll be, he'll be great. He'd probably want to double your pay. Uh, that's <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> All right, folks. So listen in tomorrow night at six forty for the pregame show, one hundred two point seven FM, or all those other ways you can listen to our station without even turning your radio on. Just get on your computer. It's the Carney Bulldogs against the Grain Valley Eagles. And kickoff is at 7 o'clock. It's going to be a beautiful night for football. Coach Gray, thank you so much for being with us. We enjoy this in a way that I can't even describe. And uh, it's a good thing there's no alcohol involved. There would be problems. The FCC would be at our door. That's what kind of fun we have in here. So all you folks have a great weekend. See you tomorrow night at the game. See you next week.
KPGZ News. 102.7 News. This is Melissa.